We have this balance board which is great for improving your balance. However, after you get good at it, it can get boring quite quickly. Therefore, we have to make the board more engaging and fun. And while doing so, I'll share a couple of approaches you can use when improving your own CNC designs. After doing a little bit of research on how we could improve the design, it was clear one of the best options would be adding a maze for marbles to the board. This would add a level of difficulty when trying to keep your balance. But before we proceed to test out this concept, we should make more improvements. And there are two ways I like to do that. As the first, I like fixing the issues we have with the current design. At this point, we already have added a maze panel to make the balancing more challenging. However, I think it would be great to simplify the shape of the board as well, making it look more appealing. One of my favorite approaches when working on a design is value stacking. Simply put, what else can we add to the design to make it more valuable? For example, we could design more bottom attachment options, each at a different height. This would add different difficulty levels to the balance board. To avoid board from quickly getting boring again, we could make the maze panels changeable. This would allow us to design different mazes for the board and personalize the panels to be more suitable for adults or kids. We could also add grooves that prevent from slipping while balancing, giving you more control over the board. We could go on and on with the adding more features, but you get the idea that creating new design requires improving the existing features and adding new ones. And value stacking is a very good approach to come up with unique creations. One of the most important steps in the design process is testing out the project. For that, we have to make the new board design. So without much hesitation, I start to work on the components. This might seem like the easiest part of the project. However, just like the designing process, there is plenty of room for improvements and optimization. And often the prototyping reveals what other design improvements needs to be made. It's also important to test out different crafting approaches. For example, our new balance board design requires a large pocket for the maze panels. And there are two obvious options to make them. One would be cutting a large pocket in the thicker sheet of plywood. This approach would take quite some time. The other option is to cut the baseboard from the same thickness material as the maze panels and glue a thinner sheet at the bottom of the board, creating the pocket for the maze panel. This approach would add more steps to the build, however, it will provide a better looking pocket. We could use the same technique when making the maze panels, but this time we will engrave the mazes using a ball end bit. Once the parts are cut, it's time to proceed with the next steps. As the first task, we have to glue the thin sheet to the balance board. To do that, we first have to remove the wood shavings of the edges of the main panel and send one of the thinner sheet sides. Then we can glue the parts together and add a bunch of clamps to ensure high quality glue up. While the glue sets, I work on the bottom arches and the main panels. We have to prepare them for finishing, which means the edges have to be rounded nicely and all the surfaces have to be sanded smooth. Of course, sanding the larger surfaces doesn't take long. However, the plywood edges and the engraved mazes require more attention. We also have to fix a couple of tear outs in the maze panels before we can consider them as ready for the next steps. By the time we are finished working on balance board attachments, the glue has set and we can remove the excess wood from the thinner sheet, clean up the joint corners and prepare the part for the finishing. To enhance the look of the balance board, I thought it would be cool to paint the bottom arches and the maze panels in different colors. The lower arches and seemingly the easiest maze panel have to be green. The second difficulty level has to be yellow and of course the hardest level has to be red. But the balance board itself would look better with the natural Baltic birch plywood look. So I apply a layer of liqueur to the board. Once the paint had dried, it's time to test how well the new board performs. So I attach the bottom arches to the main board, flip it upright and insert the green maze panel. The first level, as predicted, is easier to balance by comparison to the first balance board design. However, the maze panel requires more concentration and practice to complete without the board touching the ground. The second level is a little bit more challenging. The elevated bottom arches make it more difficult to keep the balance and the slightly harder maze panel adds another level of challenge. It wasn't too surprising to learn the third level was even more demanding in terms of balancing skills. So I think we have succeeded with the updated balance board design. 
The only two minor improvements I would make for the next board would be using a V-bit when engraving the grip strips for the foot pads and probably wouldn't use the ball end bit for the maze panels. Don't get me wrong, the result looks good, but it did require a lot of sanding when preparing the panels for the finishing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.